Good morning, everybody. Still morning. It's a pleasure to uh, be uh, here today to address all of you, and I thank all of you for your presence and to your listening today, and also for all the people that are following me on the webcast. Uh, so um, for those that uh, don't know me, my name is Marco Settembri. I'm managing since nine months the Zone Emena, uh, but I'm 30 years in Nestle. So uh, the perspective that I'm going to give you today is focusing on category growth. And uh, when I talk about category growth, first of all, I want to explain what does it mean for me. Of course, uh, it's, a, it's an obvious statement, but for me, the focus of today's presentation is on the concept of winning, winning in the zone MENA. So uh, my focus will be mainly on four categories that count for uh, the most part or the major part of the business in Zone Mena. And we in four categories in which we have different situations. We have Nescafe, coffee, in which we are clearly leading. We can say that we are winning because Nescafe is uh, keep on growing after many, many years. But also has been able, Nescafe, to reinvent itself. Uh, uh, we, Laurent talked about Nescafe Dolce Gusto, and uh, Nescafe Dolce Gusto got a remarkable achievement last year because we went from, in 10 years, from zero to one billion. This is born brand uh, concept uh, uh, that we have created internally. Uh, we are winning in pet care. We are not leading, but we are winning. If you can see the, 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 our history in the last 20 years, in the, we have constantly from a very distant uh, number two, we are constantly growing share, and now we are very close to the leadership uh, in uh, uh, retail. And that's uh, a story that I, can, I could go on and tell you about it, but it's a very successful story in which we are winning. Then we have uh, two other categories in which I will focus uh, later on, is uh, confectionery and food. I would say for these two categories, my focus will be, and our focus will be to create the condition to win. Because in these two categories, yes, we are winning in several uh, countries, in several sub-segments of these two categories. But overall, we can do even better. We can really have uh, the base to win in the future even uh, further. So how we are going to do it, how we have done it so far, uh, Mark and uh, Laurent has explained to you the uh, virtual circle. I mean, that's exactly the Nestle model, the virtual circle is the way we work in a very disciplined way in the, in, the, in the past 20 years. What I want to convey today that we want to go beyond also. I mean, this is very good, it's very disciplined, is uh, giving us continuous improvement, but in certain elements of the Zone Mena, we need to really accelerate and go beyond the normal cycle of the virtual circle. So we'll do that also, uh, and not, all, not only also, I would say mainly focusing and starting from the unbelievable, unbeatable footprint that we have in Zone Mena. And that's one of our strengths. The, our presence and our number one position or number two position in almost uh, uh, the big part of the Zone Mena is a strong starting point. So we'll combine this footprint with the focus, expertise, on categories, the passion, expertise, the unique expertise that we have in the people that work in the different categories. But we'll do that with the people, with the people that work in this zone. And I have to say that uh, the more and more I meet in different people in the, in the zone of MENA, it's unbelievable the passion that all our people in the zone put in, uh, in the business. So if we take uh, the picture, you see 27 billion of the business in zone of MENA, as uh, uh, you have seen before, the total picture is 27 billion. The area of my responsibility, so the, the categories that are managed uh, at the zone level is 17, 16 billion. Uh, if you took the geography, still Western Europe is two thirds of the business in the zone, so it's an important part. But Eastern Europe and MENA, where we have different dynamics, also start to be a, a very material part of, uh, of, of the zone. In terms of categories, uh, you, you also understand why I'm focusing on those four, four categories. We have coffee, pet care, confection, and food that are quite balanced in terms of weight uh, for the zone. And, uh, and this is where I'm going to focus uh, uh, my, in my presentation. 
Just one slide on, on the dynamics. Um, most of you live in Europe. Everybody knows the dynamics of Zone Mena. So I don't want to spend too much time because you know the trends. What I want just to, I will not spend time on political instability, the constant election and the impacts of what can be happen on the different election last Sunday or the previous one. The most important one, obviously, for Zone Mena will be the Brexit. The huge opportunity that we have and that we had in the past as a big company is the common market. And that's what uh, we really believe will be also for the future, for the strength of Europe especially, the common market is still something that we strongly believe and advocate. But overall, in terms of trends, there are different trends. Western Europe demographic is stable, while in, May in Middle East and North Africa, newborn and also in Eastern Europe is, uh, is a factor. What is good for Zone Mena overall, including Western Europe, is the fact that the consumer confidence is rising. So we see that people are more confident to spend money also for the food and beverage and for overall. So that's something that is quite important. We have the pattern of uh, the market, the category, competition is changing. Local players are growing. Uh, faster than, uh, than the market, that's a fact. You can judge this fact as uh, uh, bad or good. It really depends on where you, see, uh, where you see it. I just want to, to highlight the fact that if you look at our growth pattern and market share, Nestle is extremely well positioned to capture also the local trend. Because Nestle is a good combination, I'm pretty sure Patrice will, ex will expand this uh, today, is an extremely good combination of uh, global or regional brand and local brands. So this is something that is happening. What is key is to uh, be very agile in intercept the consumer trends and to anticipate some consumer trends. Where we are able to do that, we win in the marketplace. So, I'm talking about the growth. If I, in my transparency analysis, I look at the last six years, you can see that in a zone that in which the growth in terms of category is not very high, the zone has been able to always have a positive growth. And the average growth in the last six years has been of 2.3%. So I would say quite, quite remarkable, especially when you compare with the industry peers that are not enjoying the same the same growth patterns. Um, so why? Why uh, in uh, Zone Mena we are growing in this way? Why we are growing faster than competition? First of all, because we do the right category choices. We have decided to play and to compete in categories that overall in Zone Mena have a higher growth than the uh, average of the category growth in the market. So this is not only the four big categories, but also some sub-segments that are growing very fast in which we are competing uh, in different way. The second element is also the resource allocation. Just to give you an example, in capital investment, we invest almost half of our capex available capsules in two categories, coffee and pet care, where we are winning, where we are growing much faster than, uh, than the market when our growth rate is close to uh, the uh, single, uh, mid-single digit. So uh, the, the, the third element, in addition to the virtual circle that uh, we are applying, you can see from the results, or thanks to the virtual circle, we have been able to grow market share in more than 60% of the cells, you know, the business cells that we consider markets category combination, we are growing share. We spend much more money in consumer marketing, and we have been able in the last three years to improve our trading operating profit by 120 basis points. Also doing portfolio, active portfolio management, because we did some transformation in the last, in the last two years. And about transformation, I just wanted to put in this slide what Zone Mena has experienced in the last, in the last 20 years is quite remarkable. So you can say that Zone Mena is a traditional uh, zone in which uh, uh, nothing happen is, is happening is uh, exactly the opposite. We have been able, in the Zone Mena, to continue to adapt our business model to what is necessary to win and to compete in the different categories. And I, I really put there uh, just examples. In reality, we did much more than that. 
And if you analyze now the business of Nestlé overall in Zonemena, you know that we have four main business models. We have the joint ventures, globally managed business, the regionally managed business, and the locally managed business. And when we do the joint ventures, it's not because we are not interested in, in a certain category. Uh, you have Froneri ice cream because it's the best way to compete in ice cream in Zonemena. Uh, Lactalis, LMPF, uh, joint venture for, for, uh, uh, for Chilled, cereal partner for breakfast cereals. And today, I, I'm pretty sure Francois also will expand on the Froneri experience that is very, very, um, uh, is doing very well. So then we have different business models. The last part, uh, the locally managed and the regionally managed business is the area in which uh, I'm going to focus now. But the message that I want to, to give you at the end of the transparency overall is the fact that we are performing well in the Zone Mena. We are adapting to the necessity of the different categories, and we are also opening to new possibility to make business in the zone. So the message that I gave you at the very beginning is, OK, but what, what is the way, how we can go beyond, what, how we can accelerate. And I say that uh, in, uh, the, the, point, the key point for our future will be to uh, create the condition to grow in all the categories in which we want to stay, we want to compete. And we'll do it with, first of all, even more active portfolio management. Mark, uh, in the very beginning, talked about that. And this applies also to all business and especially to the zone Emena. I want, we want to really base everything we win when we are able to create, understand consumer insights, to intercept uh, the insights, to create uh, uh, and anticipate uh, solution for the trends that the consumer is having. And we are doing that. We are already doing it in many different places. So we have to do it in every single category. We need to unlock resources. To win, we need to spend money. We need to invest in the right place. But we need to really generate the resource. And we have to address our structural costs. Because in many places in the zone, uh, we have to say that we can do better in structural costs. Last, but really last point, is also to have the right and the most efficient organization. It's putting, at the end, uh, the focus of empowering the decision point at the right level of the organization. And this is the way I'm going to uh, talk uh, in the future about uh, uh, category and geography. At the end of the day, we really feel that uh, the cost improvement that we can generate through the entire value chain, from structural cost to procurement, to also the other parts of the value chain, is around, in the next, uh, in the next years, around 400, 500 uh, million uh, Swiss francs. Very briefly on the learning on the two categories in which uh, is the main area of focus uh, for the company and also for Zone Mena, uh, for Purina and, uh, and, um, and, Cafe, and Nescafe. Uh, Purina is a very interesting uh, business model that we established uh, since uh, more than 20 years in the zone and uh, in, the, in the globe, in which we create expertise Total expertise, total focus. The group of people that work in Purina just think about pet, pet centricity, consumer insights, and so on. It's about model. It's the model that allows us to take decision for really the common market, to optimize resources for the benefit of the zone and for the benefit of the group. And it's also a, a passion. Passion means also that pet market is about engagement. Mark talked about that. It's about consumer engagement. It's about having the right brands that engage with the consumer. And we are really creating now uh, ecosystems in order to capture the consumer at the very early stage and to really satisfy the consumer needs in all these stages. We have launched, probably you read uh, uh, in the, on, the, on the press last week, the Purina Studios in Barcelona, in which we have a digital app really working for all single country in Zone Mena to really enable this uh, engagement uh, um, connection with our consumer. The results are, are quite impressive. You saw before the share, but I want to also talk about the profitability. We, the profitability is growing constantly. By, I mean, also uh, not taking into account or taking into account the big investment that we are doing. So we triple our profitability in the last, uh, in the last uh, 10 years. 
second uh, that I want to talk, second category is coffee. We, I talk already about uh, uh, Nescafe Dolce Gusto, impressive results and so on. We have created a similar model than Purina since 1st of January. Now the Nescafe community is a business unit, is a business unit that is responsible for growth, profit and, uh, uh, and uh, business at the Zone Mena level. This is also to accelerate the innovation. I just give you the example of Nescafe Azira. I think Patrice will, to will talk about it. But it's a strong innovation that we started in UK, thanks also to the creation of a group of people that work together. We are rolling out now in every country in Zone Mena in six months. So extremely good first results. And this is just to capture one trend, the coffee to go, that you know very well. Azira is the right solution to really have the best possible soluble coffee and instant coffee uh, when, uh, when, uh, when you are on the go. The second element that this is something starting is also the, even in a category that is extremely profitable, very successful, there are huge part of improvement that we can do. And this is also what we are going to do uh, thanks to harmonization of coffee, bl coffee blends, thanks to leveraging the communication platform. You will see, very, uh, you will see today uh, the new communication for the new innovation, renovation of Nescafe Gold that will be rolled out in all countries in Zone Mena in the next, uh, in the next three months. Uh, so, coffee pet care, we are, I'm feeling, we are feeling that we are in the good track to capture all the opportunities that we have in these two categories. Going to uh, food and confectionery, three questions are we, uh, that I have and that I also putting on, uh, on, on my teams. Are we winning in these three categories? Are we making the best choices for the benefit of the group and the benefit of the zone? The zone? Are we optimizing the resources? I believe that we can have opportunity of addressing that and by the way, these two categories are on the double digit profitability, so it's not a problem per se for the company. It's good, it's growing, it's good profitability. But the real question is not just to be satisfied on what you have today, what these two huge categories for the zone can bring in the future. So uh, what we need to recognize that these two businesses are managed locally, and this is good uh, because these two uh, confectionery, chocolate, food is very local in terms of taste. But we missed opportunities to really roll out big innovation that we do in certain countries in the zone in a fast way. Uh, we need to address bis some business cells that are dilutive. If you look at the my data, we have two thirds of the portfolio in food that is more than accretive to the company, more than 20% uh, level of profitability. So one third as below zero. So of course, it's, it's obvious that by addressing this diluted cell, fix it, fixing the profitability, growing or exiting some of them, we can, we can improve the overall attractiveness of the food uh, um, in Zone Mena. And the last but not least big point is through uh, opportunity to address structural costs because in the food area, because of the local footprint that has been created very nicely in the last uh, 30 years, we have areas of opportunity that is coming from the common market, coming from the fact that we, and the distances that in, especially in Europe, are allowing us to make some choices. So in the future, uh, the category, when I talk about category approach, means to having clearly what is my portfolio, what is our portfolio, and we can streamline and simplify our portfolio in many areas. It's not just simple SKUs, it's also which is the brand in which I want really to, to spend money, which are the countries in which, and the equation between uh, the countries and, 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 and brands. Industrial and logistic infrastructure, I'm talking about common market, we do believe that we have huge opportunity also in the logistic infrastructure, also to serve big customers that are uh, competing in many different uh, uh, places, especially I'm talking about e-commerce. We are doing already in pet care extremely successful with uh, uh, dedicated e-commerce e uh, uh, customers. Uh, of course, also in food, we want to do and we want to enhance even further what we have in reality in the company, the category, expertise, the consumer insights that we have. 
We want to have an approach not only at the local level, but also at the regional level. We have already big ideas that can work in different uh, food culture in the zone. And also we are open to consider um, some uh, uh, selected uh, acquisition to uh, complement our portfolio. But I want to start so from what is extremely good. Wang Ling uh, talked uh, extensively about uh, Maggi. Maggi is a fantastic brand. It's a fantastic brand because it combines the global footprint, the expertise, with the positioning. Maggi is about solution. It's about homemade cooking. It's really giving the answer to what the current consumer needs to have the right solution to cook what I want with the right help coming from the Maggi solution. And it's also about uh, uh, engagement. I just want to show you uh, the Maggi Diaries uh, uh, from Middle East example, just to show you how the Maggi brand can be in the connected way with the consumer, with the, uh, the, the people that want to cook, give immediate answer to, the, um, to them. Maggie Diaries has won this campaign, uh, another award last week in London, the M&M Award. But it's important to understand which kind of award is winning, on top of everything that is winning, is because it's empowering women through food in creating change in the community. And this is what we are doing in, the, in all the communities in the Middle East. Maggie is also a very good brand to embrace the authenticity trend. You will see now with the innovation that we are doing for this year already in some countries and rolling it out in every country next year, is how we are doing that with new products and with the Paniola product that you will taste in the lunch and also with other products. We are doing also leveraging other brands and other concepts that we have with pizza. In pizza, we are covering with Boitoni and Wagner the different segments of the, of the, of the category. And also the vegetarian, again, you will test the product, the Garden Gourmet uh, vegetarian and flexitarian uh, offer that we have, in, we have rolled out now in, uh, in more than 12 countries in zone Emena. But also, food is also very interesting for me because, as I said before, it's also uh, based on strong local brands that connect very strongly with the local consumer. And again, I give you an example of connecting the value chain with Vignari. Vignari is a Polish brand in which we are more than 50% market share in the food market. And uh, look at how we can capture the authenticity and the origin of the product. So uh, Vignari is an example. Tommy and Sources in Germany, Switzerland is another example. Wagner Pizza is an extremely successful uh, acquisition that we did a few years ago in Germany. So we have a very good footprint to be able to succeed in food. But again, my message is very good. We can go beyond. Opportunities also is in confectionery. We have opportunity to address the complexity that we have in, uh, in, uh, um, in this category. This category we are, uh, is a huge category for, for Zone Mena. It's a huge business for the Zone Mena in, in terms of turnover, but it's also a category in which we have grown also thanks to many acquisitions in the past, uh, especially uh, after uh, the uh, possibility to acquire business in Eastern Europe. And we have an opportunity also to leverage what is really working in this category. Uh, on the other end, we have opportunity on the cost side uh, because uh, overall we are not extremely competitive in terms of cost in terms of structural cost, in, to in total delivered cost. But I would say the most important thing is also to decide what and where we can win. So making choices. Making choices will be the work that we'll do in this category in order to really win where it matters, where we can really win. And we are, for instance, in the UK, a market in which confession is huge, in which we have a fantastic footprint, a market in which we clearly we want, uh, we want to win. So base, again, uh, the basis is very strong. We have fantastic strengths. Uh, the, the, as I said before, lots of acquisition. In this acquisition, we also acquire very good uh, master brand, local brand that connects very well with the local taste. So exploiting the best of the local brands that can really convey with the local taste what consumer wants in the different places, but also premiumizing. Premiumization we've done 
to innovation. And like I said, the Latelier is a, is a strong innovation that we are now rolling out around uh, Europe. It's unique uh, chocolate uh, tablet uh, uh, with a unique technology that we are producing uh, in, uh, in a couple of factories at the zone level, but also premiumizing KitKat. You know better than me, the pricing power in Zone Mena uh, is limited. The, pr the real price in Zone Mena, in Zone Europe, I would say, especially in Western Europe, is the mix. So the ability that we had in coffee and pet care to uh, work with the mix, the price per kilo increase, is a way to increase the margins and to increase the profit. KitKat now embarked since a few years in this journey, and you can see that the results in KitKat profitability also is growing and will grow thanks to the premiumization, premiumization strategy, coming from obviously innovation, renovation, and new way to connect with consumer and to give better product to consumer. So overall, in the zone, uh, we, especially in food and confection, but I would say in the zone, what we are trying to do is to evolve from a purely local to local choices and the resource optimization to combine the local expertise, the local execution, the local strong uh, taste with a regional approach in which all the decision also will be taken together, markets and categories. So we want to obviously start, especially in some areas of our business from the uh, st uh, structural cost. We have huge opportunity to improve, not only because we are inefficient per se, but because it's the world is changing. The zone, Europe is changing. The European part of the zone is changing. So we can grab much more opportunities in addressing the structural cost. The uh, last element that I want to say is about, uh, I, I, I have not touched a lot about uh, route to market and, uh, and uh, customers, because it's been covered and will be covered also today. I just want to give you two messages. We are winning with the winners. Discounters, our uh, growth in the, in the first uh, part of the year is uh, almost double digit. We are extremely well positioned, especially in some categories we have been able to connect with the discounters and to give the right offer with the right price in a way that we are competing very effectively. I'm very happy on what uh, we are doing in that sense. And also in the e-commerce online, I mean, again, pet care, I told you before, uh, pure players and so on, but also with brick and mortars, with direct to consumer. Now direct to consumer is a strong area that we are uh, pursuing and we'll see very soon uh, some uh, strong results. I just want to tell you that for every category in Zonemena, the online share is higher than offline share. So we are seeing already that we are extremely well positioned uh, in the, uh, the e-commerce e engagement and with the new trends that undoubtedly also in Zone Mena will be important. In conclusion, Zone Mena is performing. We are performing in the zone. Uh, we want to win in every category in which we want to play. And by winning, again, we'll respect the rules of the game of each category. We are winning and determined to win in coffee and pet care. We want really to create the condition to win in food and confectionery. These two, uh, the people that work in these co uh, two categories have the, the same right to win, and they are extremely passionate, and they have the same passion that I see in pet care and in waters. I have to say that uh, I'm extremely proud to lead uh, the Zone Mena team. It's a very strong team is probably our biggest strength that we have. And what I had to tell you that people are just willing to work together. Now in the moment in which we see divisions between in the, in the, in the countries, between countries and so on, the people of Zone Mena are already embracing the zone uh, messages. They really want to enhance people's quality of life in the future by working together. Thank you very much. With that, we move on to Q&A for Marco. Alain, please, first question. Thank you very much, John. I hope you will remain first. I have a question regarding this one third of the portfolio, which has below average uh, margins. Um, could you help us a little bit what are 
the, uh, the factors you look at, and secondly, how long time do you give them to improve, to come to a similar level? It's a very good question. In reality, the uh, dilution level is very often not related to the uh, uh, market proposition. The market proposition in terms of innovation, price, market share is very similar market to market, but the condition, the cost equation of the different cells can be extremely different if the supply area is not optimal for this specific cell. So what we are doing is not only giving challenge, you have to improve, that's it, but it's really to work together to create the condition in which some cells in which we can win can be extremely profitable. We are working now. I would say that the strategy in food and confectionery is probably, I don't like to say that is, uh, we are strictly based on phases, but the first phase in the next uh, 18 to 24 months will be strongly uh, biased to uh, simplify, streamline, reduce costs, and so on. And the second phase will be more uh, on the growth, innovation, and, uh, and growing. So that's the time frame. So we are talking about the same time frame that Mark has expressed. I would say this is more the phases that we want to, do, to follow in this. And many action is not in the marketplace, but is on the zone level, because we take decision also in terms of where to put resources in the future. James, please. Hi there. A question for me, uh, James Target from Berenberg. Um, on um, online e-commerce in Europe, you, some of your big customers, uh, your Tesco, Amazon, um, they're not making much money online. Um, so where do you see the role of large suppliers like Nestle in letting them achieve profitability online, considering the size of the growth there? Well, I would say this is, uh, we are looking at the evolution of e-commerce, and uh, clearly there are some winners in the e-commerce. That's why winning with the winners is also to see if uh, a certain retailer has decided to put online e-commerce as a priority, and they want really to win, or they want just to participate. If, we, if they want to win, we can uh, be with them, and we can help them, also in a certain way, giving the right offer, the right price, the right promotion, I would say, engagement in order to do it. So there are some winners, some are less winning, some, uh, so we are clearly working, especially with the winners, and we are doing extremely well. With Amazon, as, uh, as uh, Laurent uh, was saying, we created an acceler acceleration team that will work also with our team that we have in Zone Mena in order to understand, help, and also accompany the Amazon uh, future uh, evolution. We, at the end of the day, we are not privileging anybody. It's just a question to really continue to win with the winners. James, right here. Uh, can I come back to uh, what's well, related to the previous presentation and Stuart's question? Do you have this issue of uh, inconsistent specifications in Zone Europe as well, and a need to reduce the number of specifications, or is that purely an issue in the Americas? No, it's a, it's a topic also for Zone Europe, especially in, uh, in some categories. I was, um, I was looking at the, now the Christmas promotion for, for chocolate. <laughs> it's Santa Claus promotion. And then the factory wrote to me and wrote to my people and say, look, well, why we should produce 17 kind of Santa Claus for 17 different countries with 17 different dimensions, with 17 different cases and so on? Can we do better? That's when I talk about harmonization, is also that. Do we really need 17 Santa Claus? Probably not. If I ask the market to optimize, they will always say, yeah, but my Santa Claus of 20 centimeters is, is better than the German one that is, I mean, of course, we'll listen, I will listen, I will be, I want really to perform, but I want to harmonize, I want to give the factory the, the possibility to reach 80% of asset intensity as soon as possible. And this is when, when I said, it's me also. It's not only fixing the market objective and just do it, but also me creating the condition for the factories, for the market to win. Yes, there is big opportunity. I realize you weren't, you weren't in charge when we were told this was all happening 15 years ago. 
But why didn't it happen 15 years ago, and why is it, why is it going to happen this time? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's normal. Uh, if, uh, if you ask 25 different people to win, and they, 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 they do it, people do it with a very good faith. They really try to optimize their resources. They will really always try to win looking at their own situation. If you don't ask a different question, they will continue to do, and they will continue to do differently because in their marketplace, in their specific situation, that's the best solution. Nothing wrong, it's fantastic, but it's also our responsibility. That's why I'm saying combining category and market, leveraging the two elements, the expertise, the logic, I mean, the logic is harmonization is obviously logic. Harmonization is not done for in every single element. Coffee blends. It doesn't mean that the uh, English consumer likes the Russian taste or like the Italian uh, kind of coffee. We know. We know very well. We have absolutely uh, a pattern of all consumer what they want. That doesn't mean that uh, we'll have uh, 45 coffee blends because this is unmanageable. Also, so we can adapt that. We can combine, we can clusterize. There, I mean, when we talk about money, the money is there. The money is in our ability to win, but also to harmonize. Yeah, please. One. You know, if, if the US uh, is decided to sell the confectionery business, why is that not, that not an option in the case of Europe? And the reason I ask that, as you say, is lower margin, complexity. Uh, I believe that in some markets you don't have scale either. And you know, it's, why not? Why is that not an option? No, but that's, that's always an option, but why doing that? It's a huge category. It's a huge business. We are winning in many different places. By the way, we are good double-digit profitability. I'm not at all saying that confession is a single digit. We are spots. We have different countries slash brands in which we have even 20 plus level of profitability. And it's the same uh, situation when I uh, was in charge of pet care 20 years ago. We were very distant number two. We were doing 5% profit. It would have been very easy to decide to exit pet care in that moment. And uh, I mean, you can also, if you fix and if you focus on the right things, you can win. And I tell you, we, if we do it, it's because, Mark can answer better than me later today, we believe that in confectionery we can win. That doesn't mean that we will not take some decision in some cells or some brands and so on in, because it's not sustainable managing the number of brands and cells that we have today. Absolutely. But overall, confectionery category remain very attractive for, for the company. This has been confirmed by Mark uh, uh, recently and also today, and we believe that we can even improve. What I'm saying is a really extremely good level of profitability. We can really become accretive also to the, the zone. I'm definitely sure. Okay. Can take one more question if there is one. Yeah, Warren. Hi, it's uh, Warren Ackerman at SockGen. Can you just talk about taking out structural costs in Europe more holistically? It's never been easy to reduce costs in Europe or close factories in Europe, given Works Council's issues. I mean, how many factories do you have in Zona Mina at the moment, and how many do you think you need to have in the next five years? And that 400 to 500 million number of structural cost savings, how was that number arrived at, and do you expect to actually retain any of that to the margin? Thanks. The number of factories, I think we had it in one of the first slides, is more than 150 factories, but this is for Nestle in Zona Mena overall. Uh, there are opportunities also to consider the equation of factories. Sometimes you, you think about a physical place that is necessary or not necessary, but very often is the technology and number of lines and the capacity utilization of different lines. If you don't harmonize, one of the things that we have done in the coffee and the pet care is also to harmonize technology, to have one technology that can be run in every single place uh, with patent technology, with something that is unique for us that can give us the 60, 40, or, or 70, 30 in terms of operability. In uh, the other areas, in confectionery food, we, we have very different technologies coming from the different acquisition that we did, especially in confectionery. We have different situations. We have many lines, mainly lines that are producing the same kind of product. If you tell me, 
if you ask me, probably is more in uh, dedicating lines in where we have the best conversion cost and the best total delivery cost to produce for sub-region, not only for Zone Mena. Of course, I'm not talking to have uh, one line producing for Zone Mena, but having more, I would, I would say, harmonized technology, fewer lines, and so on. Factories will always, uh, I mean, as Mark uh, presented before, we are also having a global manufacturing footprint analysis. We are examining the different uh, plus and minus of our manufacturing footprint. There are areas of improvement also in terms of uh, factory future. We have already uh, done many factory uh, uh, sale or, or closure in the past uh, 10 years, five to 10 years, uh, in, in all the categories, by the way. We have done it in, in the Nestle way. We have done it extremely well. In full uh, transparency with the social uh, partners, guaranteeing to people all the best possible conditions, guaranteeing the future of work, and so on. And this is happening, unfortunately, because we don't need certain uh, duplication of factors. We'll continue to do it, but we'll continue to do it with full sense of responsibility when needed. Thank you very much.